All right, so uh, yeah, Jesper set the stage on XDP. Um, one of the comments was about uh, you know XDP being a more Linux-friendly alternative to specialized toolkits like DPDK. I would actually argue, given the current limitations of XDP, is it really any different than DPDK, right? And so that's kind of the, the premise of what, what I'm getting at with this talk is how to make things better. So let's set some context. What does it mean to do something in XDP, right? So XDP is really referring to running BPF programs in the NIC driver. Packet comes in, if you've installed a, or attached a BPF program to it, run the BPF program against that packet and decide the fate of what's gonna happen, okay? But when you look at how those programs are driven, currently you're, you're very limited in what you can do from the XDP context. There's not a whole lot of kernel helpers. You're ba basically having to drive everything through maps and or you can reload your, your BPF program with new constants, right? So while you can argue that it's not a kernel bypass technique, it is a networking stack bypass technique. So I'm, you know, I work for a company that does switching, an OS for switches. So I want to focus on L2 and L3 forwarding. What's the current state and how can we make things better when XDP? So if you wanted to do fast path forwarding in XDP today, again, you're, you're limited to maps and BPF programs, okay? So you could have some agent running in user space. It talks to some SDN controller to pull down updates, push those updates into the maps as packets come in, look at the DMAC, look at the destination IP or whatever, and rewrite the headers and send it out. Very limited uh, in, in terms of how it's, it integrates in with Linux, Linux APIs. Um, Linux debugging tools, um, any kind of local events like a link event happening and how fast it's going to update those maps to, to get the right data in. Okay, so effectively in this kind of a design, you've made Linux just nothing more than a boot OS, which is really on, on par to how DPDK solutions work. You've modified that driver to push the packets to your program as fast as possible, but a lot of similarities to it, right? So again, coming back to that comparison of XDP and DPDK, if, if I'm running this you know, custom agent and updating maps, I can't use IP to look at my route listing, look at my forwarding database, look at my you know, features and, and address lists or, link, or um, um, feature lists like VLANs and bonds and stuff. Right? If I'm trying to debug something happening, you know, I don't have TCP dump, I don't have any kind of packet counters or, or any, I have to have customized tools that know how to understand that specialized XDP program. So what we need is a better integration of XDP with Linux. So certainly you, you could do something like what we have with our switch D and you listen to um, notifications from the kernel, the neighbor entries, the route entries, and use that as a way to have a local agent responding to events and updating maps. But XDP, unlike hardware offload, doesn't have a whole lot of smarts. You have to build everything into the XDP program. So this kind of a setup is gonna be very limited in how it can handle VLANs, how it can handle lag devices, how it can scale with the number of hops, um, doing things like in-caps. The current state of XDP, if you've got custom data in the maps, separate data than the, the kernel stack, if you need assist from the kernel stack, you know, for, for like for MTU or for fragmentation, things like that, you know, you've got to repeat all that stuff in, in XDP or you have to kind of work extra hard to get that data to be the same between the two environments, okay? And really what you're doing is you're re-implementing Linux in XDP and that's what we don't want to do. So over the past, what, I guess three and a half, four years, a lot of effort has been put into SwitchDev, making Linux a more scalable, um, feature-rich network operating system, okay? With XDP, we're just kind of throwing all that work away and starting over again, right? If, if we continue down this path of just maps. So why not think of XDP as kind of a software offload? It's not really an offload, but it's in the sense that you're trying to fast path packets, fast path forwarding of packets, and you wanna have these BPF programs be able to look up into these networking data structures and use that information to decide what it's gonna do with a packet as opposed to re-implementing something. 
So coming back to I think a comment that Jesper made, it's not just about creating a whole bunch of BPF helpers. You want to do this in kind of a smart way. You know? So when you think about a forwarding pipeline that, that can be done in hardware, right? how do you create something, some building blocks in Linux where you can, you can get some equivalent capability where you plug and play as you, as you want. Right? So you're not having to do all these features all the time, which is some of the scalability issues with Linux. But you, you build this as you, as you have for a specific deployment, but yet you can still maintain the management of these maps through FRR, I mean not management of the maps, management of the data through FRR, through IF up down to, through those kinds of things. So generically what you have is ACLs, policing filters for example on ingress, um, the ability to have those ACLs or filters on multiple levels of quote devices, be it the ingress port or the L2 interface, you know, what plugs into the bridge which be used for your um, L2 forwarding uh, lookup, or on an L3, a router interface, right? So you could put these ACLs and filters in a whole bunch of different locations, but essentially it's the same concept multiple times. And if you, in your deployment, you only have an ACL on the port, or you only have an ACL on the L3 interface, then you can build an XDP program, or BPF program, that only calls those helpers for specific locations, okay? So that's kind of the intention, is to create some building blocks with a uh, expected kind of a path that you're walking down, but yet customized for a specific deployment. Right, so to come back to this in a summary, it, it's, you want to let IF up down to, or whatever network manager you're using for your OS, be able to configure VLANs, be able to configure bonds, to be able to create the bridges and, the, and have the bridge manage the FDB, for example, to be able to use Mac VLAN for BRR. You don't want to recreate all that in XDP or BPF form. You want to leverage the stuff that exists today that, that's been you know, enhanced and scaled and all the stuff and all the work that's been done over the past few years, but now bring it into this XDP context. All right, so you've got this feature list of things you want to do, be able to build in an XDP program or X, uh, uh, XDP environment, and then you, you map this into what Linux is doing today, right? So you have the packet that arrives on a port, Nick driver handles that, throws it into the queue, and it looks at things like, is there a VLAN tag? Is the VLAN tag on the port? Is it on the bond? Is it somewhere up in the stack? And so this loop is basically going through it and saying, if I've put an ingress ACL or an ingress filter, or maybe it's a net filter, right? Multiple, location, multiple options for how you configure these, these features. But essentially this loop is kind of walking up a feature stack and saying, I have an ACL on my, my ingress port. I have an ACL on my VLAN port. I have an ACL on my bridge. I have an ACL on my router interface, right? And so this is the kind of the loop that we want to mimic the capabilities of in XDP, okay? And then this is the egress side of that. You do the forwarding lookup. You've got some more hooks that you can do, filtering, ACLs, um, packet queuing, for example. So again, this is kind of where the, the target is going with, with BPF helpers. All right, so first up is going to be device table, right? To be able to have more things on that, that ingress port than just forwarding on an ingress port, right? So 100, 100 gig NIC, you really want to be able to do VLAN trunking, for example. Or you want to be able to put a lag device on that port and have multiple VLANs on top of the bond device. So essentially what that means from the, the processing perspective is you have a bunch of features that are layered on the port and then the XDP programs are executed on that baseline network interface as opposed to executing some programs on multiple layers of interface, right? So that gets into that performance killer of running these things, doing multiple lookups, trying to figure out which device is relevant for a particular packet. So specifically, if you look at like VLANs, you know, like I said, those VLANs can be in any number of locations. Or if you look at the bonds, or bridges rather, and the VLAN's going into a bridge, or it could be a VLAN aware bridge, in which case you don't have an explicit VLAN device. You just have the network interface trunked into a bridge. So you've got some challenges in how you handle these lookups. Similar with bonding, same kind of idea. Bonding brings in a whole nother example, the egress side. 
you also have to walk down that feature stack. So if the forwarding lookup says, go out you know, ETH 1.100, meaning VLAN device 100, you've got to get that back down to the NIC port, which has the actual XDB program. And then you've got to make sure you include all those tags on the packet as it goes down the stack. Bonding, for example, you got to pick the leg. So if you want the bond driver to have all this logic that decides what bonding means, you need to export something for BPF programs to be able to figure out, well, which leg does this go out of? All right, I do tend to talk fast when I get up here. That's why I said 25 minutes, more than enough. All right. So again, the biggest thing is we do not want to have to re-implement all these networking features that, it, that Linux has developed over the years and redo this stuff in, in BPF. We want to be able to do this in XTP. We want better synergy between uh, the BPF environment, XTP environment, and the full Linux stack. So first up is, again, the, the device table. And I do have prototypes now for handling VLAN trunking on ports and even handling bonds. And I don't think I've tested that combination yet of VLANs on bonds on ports, but I definitely have tested bonds on a port and VLANs on a port, and all that stuff's working fine. Algorithmically, since I'm trying to mimic that loop in the SKB core receive, um, it should work today, what, what I have on GitHub and pushed out for, the, for that fellow in Poland who's doing uh, some, some crazy forwarding stuff. Um, so anyway, what this is doing, the, these prototypes are doing, is kind of exposing some next level challenges. And those challenges are, you've got core code, filter.c, needing to access module specific stuff. How are we gonna handle that? Right, so one option is what IPv6 has, which is a bunch of stubs. And if the module's not loaded, the stub, is, is, you know, the stub ones are run, which basically says no support. But that gets kind of clumsy, right? We really gotta find something else because just in handling VLANs and bonds and MPLS, I've got some MPLS uh, patches as well, uh, I think I'm at something like six or seven different stubs that have to be done. So it's kind of an awkward solution. So that is a generic challenge that has to be dealt with to to make some of these BPF helpers to tap into something like the device table. Uh, the other problem is two different contexts wanting to access the same code. So XDP doesn't have an SKB. Most of the networking stack expects an SKB. It's a ton of refactoring. I think I've spent more time refactoring than thinking about what I want to do or thinking about how to get this done. So being able to split this code out and do things with you know, the XDP buffers as opposed to the SKB. You mentioned moving the SKBs up a little bit. Maybe that would help, help with some of this, this overhead that I've hit so far. So after devices, the next thing, and I was really hoping to have gone down this, this ACL and policing path a little bit more, but lack of time. Um, today, the, the FIB helper exists, and you can do ACLs and FIB rules. And that part is that, that piece comes in as a part of the FIB lookup. But if you wanted to do ACLs in TC, for example, or NetFilter, um, it, a lot more work needs to be done. And when you start looking at you know, the fact that you can do ACLs in FIB rules and NetFilter and TC, you know, trying to tackle all those at once is going to be a nightmare. But if you focus on something like, say, TC, TC already has a bunch of SKB, I mean, a, a bunch of BPF capability as it is. And the fact that it gives you packet scheduling on the egress, perhaps that's the one to, to kind of tackle next, is to see how do you allow some of these features from TC to be accessible from an XDP environment through these BPF helpers that have to be created. L2 and L3 forwarding. So the L3 forward, the FIB lookup helper exists today, but it's very limited. You can only do forwarding from one port to another. No features, no upper level devices uh, for support for that yet. That's what I have the prototypes for. Um, bridges is another one that needs to be tackled. Uh, someone had written a paper and had hinted that they were doing, re-implementing 802.1D 802.1D bridges in BPF form. You know, and creating some of these maps to do like FDB aging. 
you know, I, I would argue that, okay, it's a cute little prototype, but that's really kind of the wrong direction because you're re-implementing things and you don't get this whole Linux ecosystem. You're just throwing that out the door because you want to do something in this XDP environment. I would argue the better, the better path here is to open up the bridge, you know, create some helpers so that a BPF program can say, I have a packet that came in from this port on this VLAN headed to this Mac, where should it go, right? Do the FDB lookup, and if it has learning on it, then learn this new source Mac in that port as well. So do all of that in the bridge code that exists today, and then just give me the answer so I can redirect that packet to the next port. So bridges would be another, you know, a good next step for some basic features. All right, in summary, really for XDP to, to be this big win for Linux, it needs to integrate better with the stack, right? We need to be able to use our existing tools and our existing processes, our existing workflow, and not have to reinvent the entire world to just to be able to get this enhanced performance of XDP environment. And also it enables Linux to be that slow path assist. So for example, if a large packet comes in and the fib lookup says that's bigger than the, the, the egress path can handle, I need a full stack assist on this. Then the packet goes up the stack, the stack can split it into to the fragments needed to send it out. Or if you need to do something like neighbor learning because the next hop isn't resolved yet, then the full stack can come in. And so you get this good synergistic play between the two environments. Fast path when you can get it, slow path assist when you need it. All right. I just want to harp on one point that you kind yes. of touched upon, which I think is extremely interesting, especially in the long term, is looking at elements of the stack that we want to use for this slow path assist or whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. and converting them to handle SKB list data objects. Mm -hmm. And I think that is the, that would be the rigorous area where we need to think very carefully about everything, because in my mind, uh, once you get past the point of we have we have eBPF, it works as a technology, and the verifier is solid. The next layer is helper design. Yes, that is really the most difficult, challenging, important aspect of BPF moving forward is picking helpers, designing them properly, and making sure we don't expose more than we should and give enough so that people can implement what they want to do. Right. And I think exploring all of these issues with going up and down the stack and finding out what a port really is and where does a Mac go and all this is really important. And so for example, with BP filter, we run into this because you, you have to pass XDP sourced packets into the connection tracker. So mm -hmm. all of a sudden you have to teach the connection tracker how to handle SKB list buffers. Right. You're talking about this with the packet scheduler and the classifier. Mm -hmm. So I think this is a, where a lot of work's gonna happen over the next couple of years. Yeah. And, and that's why I laid out that packet pipeline as you know, a suggested kind of, uh, it's not like we're doing things kind of willy nilly, but kind of approach this from a, what are some relevant features that you want to bring into XDP? Mm -hmm. So essentially allow someone to tap into and not have to reinvent. Right. I also want to emphasize one more point, which is that uh, we have to be careful how much of this slow path assist we add, because one of the main, the, the main selling points is that XDP allows you to do not only fast stuff, but custom stuff. Yes. So it needs to coexist with the framework that we're creating, which is that if you need to do interesting stuff that's unique to your situation, here's how you do it. If you need to take advantage of existing infrastructure and things like that, here it is over here with these right. helpers. So I think these two needs need to be handled at the same time. Yeah, from, from the forwarding perspective, I wasn't even thinking of adding more features to the full stack. It was simply, um, the XDP limited environment can't handle something okay. Kind of like uh, the hardware punting something to the CPU for assist from the control plane. It's kind of that mentality of, well, I know the full stack can do it. We're both operating on the same data because XDP is actually tapping into that same right. data. It's like a, then, a, it's a cache for the slow path. Yeah. In a way. Yeah. All right. Any questions? Questions, anyone? For David. Come on. A lot of decisions need to be made in this area. There's got to be someone who has some issues they want to discuss. David talked really fast. We have time. <laughs> <laughs> so um, are you intending to implement also the kind of uh, header parser part in the XDP BPF? Or 
how do you going to I, do I have thought about what, what we could do to kind of uh, not have to have every program doing that same. It, it seems kind of tricky. I, I don't know that so you can. So one thing that's interesting is that now that we have BPF function calls, like real function calls, mm -hmm. not tail calls, one way we can move is to have actually libraries, BPF libraries in the kernel, and that's the area where you can remove code duplication and you could say, oh, parse a VLAN header or parse an IP and give yeah. me the source and destination address, destination address and we can actually have like real infrastructure for building programs instead of everyone writes their own packet processor, which is what <coughs> happens right now. Right, right. Right now, everything is custom. Everything is done, you know, for each unique deployment. I think what's cool is that I'm not so sure if we have enough experience yet to know exactly what we need as far as infrastructure, right? It's new. People are starting to get used to the, the, yeah. the technology and what you can do with it. And so we're learning. So it's going to take some time to know what kind of infrastructure we really need. Yeah. And, and things like the tapping the device table to figure out, you know, given a port VLAN DMAC triplet, what is the L2 interface or the L3 interface, meaning what do I ask the bridge to do, use as its lookup, or what I ask the, the fib table, the fib lookup to use? Um, you really have to get more than just a couple of use cases that I've got, you know, thought out and programmed and working, because once that API goes in, you know, you're gonna get screwed on your on your future progression. So it's almost like you have to get prototypes working for a whole bunch of use cases at once to say, okay, this is how everything plays together. Okay, now we can commit this as our API. Agreed. And all of my code is on GitHub. Steven. Have you thought about having the ability to have uh, some BPF hooks in the same places that Netlink event happens so that you don't have to have a user space monitor so that, you know, like, a oh, link goes down, we don't have to monitor that from user space and then do something to tweak the BPF program? So the, the intention from my perspective was you've already got FRR. It already knows how to manage routes. It already knows how to listen to link events. So if, an, if a link goes down, it'll, you know, the routes get kicked out, it knows that, and it can make decisions on how it wants to, to update the FIB. And you don't have to do anything in the BPF maps. The fact that the FRR manages the FIB and updates the FIB on a link event means XDP immediately, the very next packet, it gets that update. Cool. Anyone else? So, if we are talking about offloading the FIB or FTP tables, providing some helpers to from the BPF programs to get the FIB and FDB yeah. entries, right? So, how how do they? How are we expecting those uh, tables to be populated? Is it via exception path? <coughs> well, so it's going to be like IP. If you're doing static routes, it's going to be IF up down two, for example, your whatever your favorite net, uh, interface manager is to. FDB oh, oh, bridge FDB updates. Um, so in that case, the, 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 the bridge helper would have to say is learning on. So the, the, you know, the BPF helper that exposes bridge functionality says, yes, I've got learning enabled. So the lookup would have to include the source Mac, for example, and that, that port VLAN DMAC combination, then also the source Mac, mm -hmm. so that it can do the FDB learning as, as it's giving the answer about where to forward it. So learning, so basically so the first packet has to go to the stack. Yes, that's the yeah. Okay. Um, so for, for bridge lookups, all of them would still go through that helper. So it wouldn't have to go through, the, it wouldn't have to go through a full stack assist because the helper itself can say, I've, I've got, you know, this is the interface that goes into this bridge. So this is the bridge port information. So, oh, that bridge port has learning enabled. So while I'm doing a lookup, I will also add a new entry for this, this source Mac. Next. So while we're throwing that around, so one other thing that did come up is each one of these different networking features, for example, bonding, has unique processing that it does on ingress, for example. So if you receive a packet on an ingress slave, or on a slave that is inactive, most of those packets get dropped. So that is another kind of a little subtle detail that has to somehow be managed <coughs> for these helpers. It's almost like you need a, um, if I'm going through a bond, is this XDP compatible? You know, that kind of a simple call. And again, it's doing all this with the fewest number of instructions to decide full stack, forwarding, or whatever. So you talked a little bit about, for example, like the bond slave selection sorts of logic. Have you taken the sort of the, thought about taking it to the extreme where the native implementation is XDP, 
and the upper layer stack calls XDP, and so there is no sort of slow path up call, but it's the other way around. I have not, no. I, I'm thinking about it more of getting this fast path forwarding without reinventing what already exists, but if the bond maintainer wants to <laughs> redo that implementation in BPF. Well, that was just the example that came to mind. But. Sure, sure, I, I, I got that. Um, yeah, I guess it's, it's still kind of early, and so start off by making the existing code reachable from the, the XTP context, and then maybe it flips to, it's an implementation in BPF that, yeah. So just trying to think about some h cards that do hardware offloads for XTP, I just wondered, you know, if you can call random Linux stuff at any point. In that How case, that no, because it never actually makes its way into the, the kernel context. If it's being offloaded to the hardware, then all that all that information has to be pushed down to the hardware. So that doesn't mean to say that some yeah. implementations of XDP offload cannot implement some of these aspects. Sure, right. sure. I'm thinking about strictly from, you know, if, if we have ASICs, you know, for like for switches, we already have ASICs, so it's already doing hardware offload, and it's got much more capabilities. So if the packet is going to be like you're trying to do x86 server kind of forwarding and you want some similar speeds and similar functionalities and really keeping this, this management model consistent, right? Which whether it's x86 forwarding, full stack forwarding, hardware offload forwarding, you've got a consistent operational model. So when your customer support people log into that forwarding node, they're not scratching their heads going, wait a minute, what is this implemented as? How do I, how do I figure out where the packet drops are happening. How do I figure out how to, how to even analyze the system, right? There's some consistency to it. We still have a couple minutes. Anyone has any more questions? I was wondering how this uh, ties into the there are some things that HTTP is never going to do discussion because I, I, when, when we were working on this, one of the things that came up was someone was trying to do full uh, network function virtualization in HTTP, mm -hmm. and it became quite an extensive set of different maps and updates and all these kinds of things. Right. And there's like a gray area here, like how, where, where do we draw the line? What do we, like, when do we say no? I'll, I'll, I'll help you, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I would argue that if someone wants to do that, then sure, like they're creating their own custom whatever um, just like AFXDP is enabling someone to just punt everything up to user space and do what they want. My argument would be more from, it's a, it's a support nightmare to, if, you know, if you're doing general forwarding, it's a support nightmare to figure out what's going on. I think one way to look at, especially what he's bringing to the forefront is what we're extending XDP to do and BPF, more generally speaking, is to access objects that exist in the kernel already. So that is the main framework by which we extend eBPF to new areas of functionality. To the extreme, to show you what isn't reasonable is trying to implement a TCP stack in XDP. We're not getting there, we don't have timers yet. It's not what it's designed for. So we will probably put the, put the brakes on if someone tries to go down that road. So. That's why I keep bringing up the fact that designing the helpers and how we ac access objects and what objects we give access to is the key for keeping eBPF sane in moving forward. So I, I hope that kind of gives you the idea of what, what our kind of rules are so far. So it's kind of like someone who wants to implement the bridge in, in BPF and have to manage the aging of, of FTB entries. All that know? stuff. So the new maps were just added to allow that to happen. If someone really wants to go on that path, more power to you. I would argue from a debugging perspective, from a maintenance perspective, it's, 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 it's not, not going to be a, a great end path. But if someone wants to do it. If, you, if somebody has a whole lot of time and a whole lot of motivation, a very useful thing would be to do equivalent to OVS DBDK and OVS XDP. I think there's already plans for this. So, but if somebody's doing it and announcing it, that'd be great. <laughs> no, this has been discussed, so as you can imagine, we have this whole TC flower thing, and it's what the, the recommended way to offload OBS and stuff, but what if TC flower generated XDP programs, and then the driver got attached to that, 
And then all of a sudden, we have some really <laughs> awesome situations where like the Netronome guys have multiple firmwares. They have to decide whether they're doing OBS or BPF, and they wouldn't have to make that decision anymore, and they wouldn't have to support multiple firmwares anymore. Just moving forward, that seems like such a better approach to handling this kind of situation, especially if we're really, really committed to eBPF and XDP as a technology that hardware will offload either now or in the future. So like, that's kind of the thinking right now on that. Okay, thank you very much, David. Yep. Yep.